Hello everyone, welcome to Management Consulting Tips 101 from eLearn Chat. I'm Rick Zanotti. Today, it's all about writing. You know, we often talk about writing, how important it is to have a good writing style, to write correctly, to go and become an instructional designer and write, 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 write. The problem is oftentimes it's wrong, 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 wrong. Writing is a skill. Writing is not something that most people do naturally. There are writers, there are wannabe writers, there are bad writers. There's not much in between. When we talk about writing, there are different writing styles. Some people write very organically. They write to the person, to the learner. For example, they won't talk in the third person. They'll talk to, and now you're going to learn how to do something. You. They personalize it, which is good because when you personalize something in e-learning or training, you're making it more relevant to the person listening to it. It's all about context. We talked about that in a different show. Now, writing styles, organic, colder, fact-based, um, technical writer versus a script writer. For, for years, I've been telling people, if you want to be a good instructional designer or writer, you need to know how to do screenwriting. And they go, I want to be a screenwriter. You don't have to be a screenwriter. What screenwriting gives you is that perspective of placement, where you're putting your scenes, description, keeping things in adequate, keeping things described so that people know what you're talking about, how you're placing something, what's happening in a scene. Instructional designers are usually awful, I mean really awful at stating what you need to put in an e-learning piece or any kind of training. For example, what kind of graphic do you put in? What kind of this? What kind of that? And that's because they're not writing or thinking in context. The part of writing is one skill. They're writing words. The part of creating the visual impact of what you're writing is totally different. Now you've got to be visual in the way you approach writing. That's something that's not often taught in schools, and it's really a shame because you can't be a good instructional designer if you can't say what you're trying to say. Pretty simple. If you want to make people understand what you're writing about, you have to think creatively. You have to think of things that are in context, in other words, things that are relevant to the user of what you're talking about. So when you're writing, you want to make sure that the points are well made, that you're talking to the person, the student that you're trying to reach. This is a conversation one on one. If I'm writing something, I'm writing for you. I'm not writing for me. If you look at something like Scientific American in the old days, uh, it was all jargon. That was not good writing. It was words meant to impress the population reading it, in this case, scientists. And I've heard many scientists say, well, you know, I read Scientific American, I have no idea what they were talking about. Because jargon can get pretty obtuse. It can really obfuscate the meaning of what you're trying to say. Obfuscate, big word, hide the meaning of what you're trying to say. So when you write, you need to write clearly, you need to write succinctly. If you're writing a story, it doesn't have to have a billion adjectives to describe something. Use people's imagination. Give them just enough to be curious about what you're talking about. We'll, we'll talk about creative writing later on, but for now, keep in mind that what you're writing has to make sense not only to the piece that you're writing, but also to the people either reading or listening to it. It's very important that they understand what you're talking about. When you call out graphics, and we're going to have a whole section on this in another uh, piece. When you call out graphics, if they're not in context, they are meaningless. So you have to do things that make sense, is relevant to the words being shown or said or spoken. 
So very, very important that when you write, you write clearly, you write to the point. Don't blab forever. Nobody wants to hear you. If you know a lot of big words, that's nice. But unless your whole audience knows them, they won't understand what you're talking about. And many times the big words tend not to be in current use that often. Um, remember, we're, we're dealing with current generations of non-readers. Not everybody's a non-reader, but a lot of people don't read. And that means they're not going to have a big vocabulary usually because they're not used to reading. You don't usually talk the same way you write. But when you're writing instructional material, you have to talk like you talk so that it makes sense and it's personal, personalized for the person reading or listening to it. You want it to be as natural as possible. Otherwise, people will tune it out. If they don't understand what you're talking about and they don't understand how you've written something, then you've lost the message of what you're trying to write. Do you have a message? A lot of times courses don't seem to have much of a message. So you want to make sure your message is consistent, loud and clear throughout the whole course. Otherwise, people will be lost. But writing is a skill. You normally don't get it in college. You've learned how to write in grammar school, in high school, maybe even earlier. By the time you get to college, you're learning a little bit late. You can, never say never, but the odds are against you that you will be a great organic writer unless you really practice an hour a day, two hours a day. If you want to be a good writer, it's like being a good musician. If you play an instrument, you have to practice, 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 or you won't remember it. Um, they call it muscle memory. Once the mind treats it like a muscle where you've done something a million times. For example, I practice martial arts and you practice hitting and hitting and hitting and hitting the same move over and over and over again until it becomes natural. Then you don't think about it. It just happens. That's the same with writing. When you write and you write often and you understand what you're writing, you just keep writing, then that will become something second nature to you. Muscle memory kicks in. And when muscle memory kicks in, writing becomes easy because now you're not thinking about it. It is emanating from you naturally. You are channeling some creative writer or something like that. Um, most often the night channelers are on the wrong channel, so I don't know what to say there. Practice writing. The more you write, the better you're going to get at it. You're going to get at it. Writing, practicing is very important. Like I said, a musician practices, they get good. You practice sports, you get good, the better you do. I used to play racquetball. And the more you practice, the better you got at it. That's with anything in life. You want to walk, practice walking. You want to sit and get up fast, practice sitting up and getting up fast. You want to be in front of a large audience and you need to practice in front of that large audience and project and blah, blah, blah. It's all about practice. So to be a good writer, practice. To be a good anything, practice. If you think you can get by without practice, you will be mediocre or less than mediocre. That's not good. Mediocre is already bad enough. Being less than mediocre, mm, that's kind of sucky. So anyway, practice your writing. Practice what you're trying to say. Be clear, succinct. Don't use a million words when you can use 10. Look at writing as a way to express yourself effectively and efficiently. For eLearn Chat, Management Consulting Tips 101. I'm Rick Zanotti with Relay Corporation. If you're interested in having some work done in your e-learning courses, writing or whatever, give us a call 1-800-428-3708, extension 105. That was a gratuitous plug, but what the heck. Have a good one, everyone. We will see you next time on Management Consulting Tips 101. Thanks.